Suppose that 2,000 people want to travel from point A to point B every day. There are two possible routes they can take. Route 1 goes via point X and route 2 goes via point Y. The roads AY and XB always take 20 minutes. We might think of these as motorways with lots of lanes, so even if all 2,000 people travel this way, there won't be much congestion and the road still takes 20 minutes. The roads AX and YB take N over 100 minutes, where N is the number of people taking this route. This means the journey will take longer if more people use the road, as there's increased traffic congestion. We might think of these as narrow country lanes. In this situation, the two routes are equally appealing to drivers. Our 2,000 cars will split evenly between the roads, so 1,000 go each way. Why is this? Well, imagine that the drivers did not split equally, and more cars went on route AXB. Well, then road AX would be more congested than road YB, so it's quicker to use route 2. There is thus an incentive for some drivers to switch and use the quicker route. Drivers will change routes until both routes take the same amount of time. Once both routes take the same amount of time, there is no longer an incentive for someone to change because switching would only increase their journey time. This is called a Nash equilibrium with 1000 cars on each road. This means both routes will take 30 minutes. Here we've made an assumption that every driver knows what every other driver is doing before setting off. They will thus always act optimally and use the quickest route. This isn't actually too far from reality, as people will often check their phone or satnav to see which route is quickest. This will often tell you if there are traffic problems on certain roads. If we also assume this journey is taken every day, over time people will learn what others do and will know which is the best route. Now let's suppose we build a new road in between point X and Y. This is a super fast road that takes zero minutes to drive along. Surely adding a new super fast road will help reduce traffic times, right? Well, let's see what happens. Drivers will now notice they have an incentive to switch routes. This is because the N over 100 roads will always take at most 20 minutes. If everyone uses these roads, 2000 over 100 is 20 minutes. If any other number of people uses these roads, they are faster than 20 minutes. Every driver prefers the N over 100 roads to the 20 minute roads, so 2000 cars follow this route. The new Nash equilibrium gives us a journey time of 40 minutes. The new road has actually made journeys longer. Notice that people can't now switch back to a 30 minute route. Every possible route now takes 40 minutes because there is increased congestion on our country roads. This is the Braze paradox. This isn't actually a paradox at all. It just illustrates how people following their own self-interest can make everyone worse off. No one in this example has made a bad decision, except the person that built the new road. They've all chosen the fastest possible route, but this has led to a suboptimal outcome. It would benefit everyone to cooperate and agree not to use the road XY. We would then go back to 30 minute journey times. However, there would always be an incentive for someone to deviate from this and reduce their journey by 10 minutes. This deviation would be in their own self-interest, but it would make other people worse off by increasing congestion. Now, the Braze paradox isn't just a theoretical exercise. There are real-world examples where journey times may be reduced by removing a road or some other mode of transport. Examples are seen all around the world, including Seoul, Stuttgart, Boston, London, and New York. A New York example occurred in 2009, when Broadway was closed at Times Square and Herald Square, resulting in improved traffic flow. Closing such busy roads can remove a bottleneck. This is where lots of cars end up at one place, which might be poorly designed to deal with lots of traffic. So, while the Braze paradox seems like a paradox, it isn't really. 
Sometimes we just need policymakers to step in because people acting in their own self-interest can lead to poor outcomes for everyone. That will conclude this video. If you found it interesting, please do leave a like, check out the channel for more videos like this, and subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.